Hi, I'm Alex from Accelerate Okanagan. Stick around to learn a little bit more about what's going on in the tech community here regionally, as well as across Canada and internationally. Uh, and also happy to share a little bit about funding and support resources locally in the Okanagan, some things like hiring incentives, grants and loans, as well as some startup terminology and some good books to check out if you're starting a business. Wonderful, so thank you so much for having me here today. Um, my name is Alex Reed. I am the community manager at Accelerate Okanagan. And today I'm gonna chat with you a little bit about technology on a global scale in BC and in the Okanagan and what we're doing as an organization to kind of help that growth of tech companies. But if you're not a tech company and you're like, oh, this might not relate to me, um, First of all, kind of who in the room, just by like a quick show of hands, uses technology in some capacity at their company on a day to day? <laughs> exactly. Who also loves like sourcing local companies or local organizations to work with? Awesome. So I'll be able to chat a little bit about some of the tech companies here in the Okanagan and hopefully how you as an organization or as a founder, or as an individual, can start connecting with some of those tech companies or kind of become a part of that tech community that's growing in the Okanagan so that you can utilize those resources, build those connections, feel a part of that community and maybe start to realize how you might be able to format technology in your company to help you grow and scale in certain capacities. So after I touch base a little bit about what we do and kind of some next steps that you might be able to take to become a part of that community, I'll also touch a little bit on startup terminology so when I first joined the tech industry, there were so many acronyms being thrown out there all of the time. Um, so just really helpful to kind of have a basic knowledge of some of that terminology. Um, as well as afterwards, I'm going to go into some funding and support opportunities for you locally here in the Okanagan that might be helpful to grow your business. Some that relate back to organizations like Community Futures, Futurepreneur, Women's Enterprise Center, but also some hiring incentives. Lots of folks might be looking into hire like a summer co-op student um, or like hire just someone on for a couple months. There are hiring incentives here in the Okanagan as well that you can connect with. So I love showing this chart because this is the market cap to a billion for some companies that have grown over 20 years and over two years. So typically the Fortune 500 company in the past, it's taken about 20 years to get to a billion. Um, but you're seeing over time, it's starting to take less and less time to become a billion dollar company. And just most recently in 2011 and 2012, Snapchat and Oculus Rift were able to hit that same market growth that Google took eight years for in just two years. So tech is growing like crazy and it's becoming way faster and easier to grow a business maybe in a year. I haven't heard of any billion dollar company in a year yet, but who knows, it might be happening in 2017 right now. So the Okanagan tech sector, I believe that we're gonna have a billion dollar company start here within the next 10 years, I believe it. Um, but right now as a tech sector, we're a $1.3 billion industry. That was assessed in 2015. There are 7,600 people working in the tech workforce right here in the Okanagan. So 7,600 people in 2015 were working in the tech sector. And that doesn't just mean in technical roles, which I always try to kind of squash that myth. Not everyone in a tech company needs to be technical. There's marketing, there's sales, there's HR, there's so many other roles within a tech company once you hit that kind of growth stage and you have your product developed. So there's a range of different opportunities within tech and it's a pretty cool industry to be a part of. There were 633 companies assessed in 2015. In 2015. Um, and the neat thing about that is every time I do a presentation, there's people who are like, oh, I started a company since 2015, make that 300 or 634. And I'm like, so good. So I've heard that so many times that I know it's just grown since then. So we're excited to do another one of these assessments after 2017 to kind of see how we've continued to grow. But right now the trend is that tech has been growing at about 15% per year in the Okanagan. So it was 1 billion in 2013, 1.3 billion in 2015. So really cool things happening. Um, I don't know if anyone saw some of the information about the entrepreneurial cities across Canada. So Penticton, Vernon, Kelowna were all noted in those top communities. So that's really cool to see that we have such a strong community of entrepreneurs here. 
And I think a lot of them from what I've kind of assessed are really willing and able to help each other continue to grow. So there's a lot of local support. Um, there's a lot of densification in downtown Kelowna specifically, which is where our offices are. And about 10% of the Kelowna office space is tech. And currently there's a new Okanagan Center for Innovation opening right on Ellis and Doyle. Uh, so if you come up to Kelowna, I would love to give you a tour in the next couple of weeks. We're right in transition from our old space to our new space. So in about two weeks time, we'll be settled in there and I would love to see some of you come up and visit. Um, and in about the last 24 months, we've had many exits. They're not always all talked about, but I wanna talk about them now. Uh, Carolina Homes, which was in OK Falls, was an exit at 2.5 million. Immersive Media, which is out in the North Okanagan at 100 million. Rack Force, Okanagan Specialty Fruits, Bardell opened an office in the Okanagan. Um, Pertino, QHR, which is a medical records company, got bought by Loblaws. Uh, and Stardine. So there's a lot of tech companies having these big exits here in the Okanagan and hiring and employing a ton of tech workers. So these might be some of those companies and some of those resources that you can use within your business uh, to help you continue to grow. And they're just a couple examples. So our mission at Accelerate Okanagan is this, to give new and growing tech driven businesses mentorship, connections and community that they need to thrive. So the community word in there, that's a lot of what I do. Uh, connections and mentorship. Uh, we try to kind of like, if you were to come to me after this presentation and say, um, I would love to bring someone in for marketing, like we already discussed. We have those kinds of connections with partners and patrons that we can help build those opportunities. Or I'm looking for a tech company that might be local that can help me uh, with drones and assessing um, the growth of like my uh, vineyard right now. So we can also help you build those connections. Or I need someone to develop my app. I can give you a list of a ton of different software companies in the Okanagan that can help you with that. So we love helping build those local connections. In terms of mentorship, we have a team of executives and residents, we call them. They're mentors who have done that whole business life cycle before, um, many of them in tech. And so they've started and grown and exited companies and now they wanna give back to the tech community and to the local Okanagan community by helping companies in return. So they're those mentors that sit down with companies for like an hour a week um, and are able to provide them feedback, support, um, help keep them accountable to their goals and really give that experience to help them grow. <coughs> So, in terms of growth, technology is a fundamental driver of growth here in the Okanagan. Tech's impacting every sector, so it's not just this vertical anymore. I think lots of people used to think like tech is just information and communication technology, it's software. Uh, but tech now is an enabler of many different sectors. So you've started to hear the buzzwords like education technology or e-tech, um, agri-tech. Um, it just kind of keeps going on and on. So there's lots of opportunities within many different sectors for technology to become a core. And like I said, it's now possible to build a billion dollar company from your couch in the Okanagan. Um, that's, <laughs> that's one of our big goals is we wanna help these Okanagan tech companies really be able to grow and continue to thrive. Um, in terms of provincially, the tech sector wages in BC are about 60% more than the provincial average for different sectors. So people are being treated really well in the companies that they're working into. Um, and there are about 86,000 jobs in tech in BC, which is more than some of these massive sectors that we think we have, more than forestry, mining, oil and gas all combined. So tech is huge. Um, I was just at the BC Tech Summit last week in Vancouver and there were some really cool announcements about funding for certain areas of technology as well. And I'm going to touch base on like MyTax, which is a great funding and support resource, um, as well as I'm happy to touch base if you have a tech company specifically on ISI, which is a funding opportunity from the BC Innovation Council. Um, they're planning on growing those programs and offering a lot more funding to be able to hire and get research done. So like I've kind of alluded to, uh, we have a two-pronged approach. There's program delivery and community. Um, on the community side, it's about that 
connecting that networking opportunity. So a lot of people in this room, when you first um, were kind of introducing yourself, I heard a lot of people mention networking, wanting to get to know other businesses and what's going on here. And that's one of our main goals. So I have a slide later that shows how many events that we run per year. Uh, it's about 110 across the Okanagan that we run per year. And that's just us as Accelerate Okanagan. We support other community organizations to run events in their communities as well. So like here, um, there's an individual named Keith and he runs a Tech Brews event monthly to support the tech community coming together and networking. So if you haven't gone to check out one of those Tech Brew events yet, um, he's with Big Bear Software and he brings out tech community here in the Okanagan. So it's great for us to be able to come down and attend that and meet folks starting tech companies here um, in the South Okanagan as well. So that's just another example of someone in the community also running great events. Uh, on the program delivery side, we do have a series of programs. I'm not going to touch on this too much. It's more related for if you're specifically starting a company in technology. Uh, but we have those mentorship programs for companies kind of at that prototype stage looking to grow and scale. Uh, but we also have a program that would maybe be a really great fit if you're looking to learn some of those basic business fundamentals. Um, it's called Startup Basics and it's an eight week series that teaches you things like creating a basic six month financial forecast, how to protect your idea, and you get those sessions from lawyers and accountants, so someone professional in that field. We have some of our mentors that come in and run things like um, business model canvas or how to pitch your idea. So if you're looking for funding in front of an angel network, how to do an effective pitch. We also help with some access to capital resources for companies, training and mentorship, um, and I'll talk a little bit more now about some of the community building opportunities. So these are some of those entrepreneur-led events. So I mentioned Tech Brew Penticton. Vernon has a similar version of this called Vernon Geek Beers. Um, and in Kelowna, we have one called Startup Drinks. And again, these are open to so many people. If you're looking to connect with tech companies, if you are a tech company, if you're looking for work in technology, it's a great opportunity to come and meet some other people. Uh, the ones that we help support in Kelowna, the Startup Drinks one, uh, there's also a moment where people will stand up and talk about any events going on in the community that they're running and if they're hiring. Uh, so a really great opportunity if you're looking for work or looking to hire to get the attention of an entire room of people in a similar sector. And um, marketing and design nights are the mad nights. So if you're looking for support in marketing, that might be a good opportunity to go and meet some folks who specialize in that. Uh, gaming and animation coffees, if that's maybe like a side passion of yours or your company is based on that or you're looking again for someone who works in gaming and animation, that's a great space to go and meet that specific industry sector. Tech Wings, there's one actually tonight taking place at Docs in Kelowna and it's some folks who are developers and in technology who all go out for a Wings Wednesday and talk about their passion. Um, and these are all run by community members. So these are some of those ones, like I said, that aren't run by us. So they're outside of that 110. Um, so really cool opportunity to go and check out some of these community-based events. And a lot of them do actually post their events on our website. So also if you're ever running an event in the community, you can post it on our website and we'll help you market it. We'll help you get the word out to the community in the Okanagan. Uh, so like I said, we run about 110 events per year. Uh, the number of attendees ranges uh, up to about like 3,000 in a year that will come out to those things. And uh, this past year, it was really cool to see we had about 1,400 new attendees, so people who hadn't come to one of our events in the past, which is really neat to see. Like now they're coming out and getting to know that tech community and becoming a part of that community. These are some of our major events. Um, so we have a New Year's kickoff event, uh, normally like first two weeks of January, uh, where it's about 250 to 300 people getting together to celebrate technology in the community. Um, that can consist of founders, it can consist of service providers. So if your company services startups or services technology companies, this is a great way to come and meet some of that who's who of tech in the Okanagan. Um, so I heard a couple people mention like connecting with startups is something that they're looking to do. This is a great way to do that. 
Uh, MetaBridge is also a, a kind of two-day event in June every year. Uh, so coming up pretty quickly now that we support and it brings a top uh, 15 startups to the Okanagan and brings angels and VCs from Silicon Valley up to meet these companies. Um, so kind of a cool opportunity for those two areas to collide that might not have had that opportunity before. We have a summer block party. Look out for this one. It's coming up on June 23rd. Uh, we haven't started promoting it yet, but it'll be on the rooftop patio of the new Okanagan Center for Innovation. So check it out. Um, expert access. So I'll dive a little more into this later because this is a great support opportunity as well. So if you're ever looking for feedback when it comes to accounting and legal, um, some of our partners that we work with, so Gowling, uh, Pusher Mitchell, Grant Thornton, and KPMG, they provide free 45-minute sessions where you can just sit down, bounce ideas, ask questions without any worry of getting charged during that 45 minutes. Um, and it's a good opportunity to kind of test the waters and see if it's a good relationship with that organization. Um, and then if it is and you want to follow up with them later, you have that capacity, but there's also no, like, you don't have to. You don't have to keep moving on a relationship with them, but you can get some valuable feedback sitting in that 45 minute session. So they just do that as a give back to the community and you don't have to be a tech company to take advantage of that opportunity. So I know there's a couple coming up um, in the next few weeks. It's normally about the third Thursday of every month. Funding and support. I'm gonna go through a couple funding options that are relatable to uh, most industries and sectors, but we have a long list of probably about 60 or 70 different funding and support opportunities. Um, some of them more specific to different sectors like media or animation and gaming or film and television. There's a lot of great tax credits in that sector as well, uh, but also for mentorship and support. There's a lot of great organizations that help with that. We also do Entrepreneurs Unplugged. Um, this is quarterly, and we bring in an entrepreneur who's been successful in the industry to kind of just have a fireside chat and talk about their experience growing a business. Um, so most recently, we had Mike Checkley, the president of QHR, come and share his experience starting a company, share the challenges that he met along the way, and take questions from everyone attending. They could ask the burning question that was on their mind of how did you do this, or how did you communicate with your developer team when you're more business related? Um, it can really range, so a great opportunity to get some cool feedback. And Accelerate Summit, Accelerator Summit, this is actually just recently we started doing a connection opportunity between accelerators across Canada and across the world. Uh, we helped host one recently in Vancouver where they could share best practices. So I've mentioned a couple times the Okanagan Center for Innovation and that you should come and visit us. Um, this is just a snapshot of how the building was first conceived. Um, so it's 106,000 square feet, six stories. There's a beautiful rooftop patio. Um, so I always say that I'm gonna just have my office up on the rooftop during the summer. So feel free to come and join me for a coffee up there. Uh, great view of the water. Um, so it will house everyone from a startup uh, all the way up to growth stage companies. So we're actually on the second floor with the National Research Council, which is a huge federal uh, funder. And then um, Okanagan College has their animation program being run out of that floor as well. Uh, and then there's a space with 48 shared desks. So anyone starting a tech company or a social enterprise, they're welcome to come and rent one of those desks and use the phone booths we have there, the coffee machine, the kitchen, the lounge, uh, boardrooms, meeting rooms. So it's just one of those great spaces for someone who's really trying to start off a company and they want that network and support community. There will just be so many collisions within that building and great people that they can meet that it's a really great starting point for them. And then there's another co-working space in the building and just down the street that if they start to grow, they can move into one of those other spaces and then maybe eventually get five floors in one of the new buildings somewhere because they grow that big. So a couple things on the community side on how you can get involved if you're like, yeah, this sounds great. I want to meet tech companies. I want to integrate more tech into my company. Um, we have a couple ways that you can do that or I can help facilitate that with you um, or these can just be like takeaways that you can think about that could be a good fit. Uh, so we do have a membership program. So any individual can sign up for a free 
um, personal membership. And what that consists of is we send out a midweek minute bi-weekly um, and it gives a great snapshot of what's going on in the tech community. So there was one that just went out this morning. It shared a blog post about startup weekends last weekend that took place and some of the prizes and ideas that were generated from that event. It'll share some jobs that are open in the community, whether it's like a sales job, a development job, um, admin assistant job, um, from our job board that we have. And there's normally about 60 to 80 jobs posted on our job board at any given time. And then you also have the opportunity to post a resume. So if you're someone looking for work in tech, you can just post a resume on there and any of our uh, company members can sift through that resume bank to cut down some of that time for hiring, which can be a long process. Um, so it's just a great way to stay in the know and you also get some like early information about discounts to tickets like our summer party. Um, so just a great way to kind of stay in the know about events and uh, opportunities. If you're a company, um, there is company member options and service provider options. So whether you're a tech company or maybe a support organization or maybe you're like hiring technical talent, um, you can join as a company member for a yearly fee of like $350. Um, and then you're able to post as many jobs as you want on our job board at that point. So if you're a company hiring like crazy and looking for developers and like t technical writers uh, or designers and you wanna post a couple jobs, that's a great way to do so. Um, we can also help in other areas, like if you want to help run an event together, I would love to collaborate on some event opportunities, um, as well as you get to stay in the know and vote in our AGM. Uh, from the community engagement side of things, uh, you come out to events, meet with other founders, meet with community members. Um, we have just a couple listed here. The Lived It, Learned It panel is like a couple CEOs um, or like C-level entrepreneurs just sharing their experience. So you can come in here from a couple of them on March 30th. We have an open house on April 7th in the new Okanagan Center for Innovation. So you can come and check out our space and wander around. There's some free wine and beer and cider. So what's not to love? I'll be there. Um, and then our summer party on the 23rd are just a couple of good networking opportunities. Join the Slack channel. So does anyone here use Slack as a communications tool? Yeah, so uh, Slack is this tool where you can join with like a group of friends or with your colleagues and you have this kind of ongoing conversation of like in a general channel of what's going on. You can stay updated, but you can also direct message individuals in that group and you can create separate channels. So the tech community in general has a generic Slack uh, that people can log on to. And then there's separate channels for like events and conferences or jobs. So people are posting job opportunities in that Slack channel. So that's a good way to get involved as well and just kind of be able to share your voice and get to know people in an informal way. Um, come for a tour at the OCI. If you can't make it on the 7th, I'd be happy to walk you through the space and kind of just show you around. Uh, run a community event. So, uh, do something like Keith's doing or offer to help for something like Tech Brew. Um, just getting groups of people with similar mindsets or similar passions into a room together. And we would be happy to help you market that and post it on our events page or put it in our midweek minute. That newsletter goes out to over 5,000 people. So it's sure to kind of get the word out about what you're planning and what you're doing. So we'd love to help. Um, Volinspire is a really cool platform as well. Has anyone heard of it here? Wow. So they're a tech company that started here in the Okanagan um, and they're a volunteer platform really encouraging people to get some volunteer hours in and connect them with opportunities that they might not hear about otherwise. So when I used to think about volunteering I think there would be probably like five opportunities that would come to mind. It'd be like walk dogs at the SPCA or like go and volunteer for an event with Rotary and like I kind of had a mindset of what I'd be able to help with. But on this platform, um, organizations and companies are posting all of the different volunteer opportunities. So it could be like photographer for this event. There was one for the Great Okanagan Beer Festival, like where you can just go and like hang out and help them with registration and everything. Um, so there's lots of really cool opportunities where they cater to your interests and give you suggestions of way to, ways to get involved. 
They're also partnered with Canada 150, challenging individuals and companies to volunteer 150 hours in 2017 together. So they're doing some really cool things, and it's kind of just a really great way to get involved and get to know some of those other companies. Um, email or call me if you ever have any questions. That's another great way to get involved. Just stay in touch. If you are looking for like a designer or contracting someone out in your company that's a technical skill set, I'm so happy to try to build connections and see what we can help with. So going more into like the technical program side of things, I mentioned that tech is now kind of a tech enabled thing. There's clean and green tech, agri-tech, advanced manufacturing, life sciences, and then still ICT. Um, and we kind of help anywhere from that startup stage all the way to growth stage companies. So these are the kind of two differentiators between startup and growth stage. Uh, startup is more like a temporary organization looking for repeatable and scalable revenue. Growth stage company is like they have customers, they're growing and scaling. And this is kind of our way that we're able to help. So I love this slide because it gives a good snapshot of kind of where your company might fall on this spectrum, how we're able to help at different stages. So the Startup Basics one is the one I was mentioning that kind of gives basics of starting a business, uh, like the business model canvas or positioning statement or pitching. Um, so if you're looking for any of those kinds of skill sets, it's an eight week program, an hour and a half, like every Wednesday or every Thursday, depending on the season. Um, and you get to, again, network with some other people starting companies at a similar stage to you. So that could be a good one to check out. And if you are a tech specific company, um, any of these ones might be a fit for helping you get that mentorship component and getting partnered with one of those executives and residents. So I don't want to dive too deep into them, uh, but the BC Venture Acceleration Program we started four or five years ago, and now it's been picked up by BC Innovation Council and 14 accelerators across the province are running that same program that we started. Um, and it helps that those early stage companies get, like, get to market, um, expand in their market, hopefully get some of those first sales and that revenue coming in. Calibration is you're like dominating a market sector, but you still want mentorship and community and some market validation. Um, or maybe you've gone through this early stage program and still looking for help in some capacity. Rev up is for companies normally around a million dollars in recurring revenue per year. Um, and it's a team approach. So there's a team of mentors working with the senior leadership team of a company to really help them grow and scale quickly. <laughs> and this I call my proud mom slide because these are just some of the companies that we've worked with uh, that have gone on to do really incredible and amazing things. Uh, so kind of at this startup stage, there's a couple of here locally in uh, the South Okanagan in Kelowna, out like VO2 Masters in Enderby, um, and just such a range of experiences that these companies have had. So Volinspire, I already mentioned, they're a company that we've worked with on our program. Um, Perfit Dental Solutions, so right now they're actually making like a, a different version of being able to get dentures. Um, where they're actually a lot lighter because of the machine that they're using to be able to create them and they can make them a lot faster. So they have the capacity to do this really quickly over in Kelowna um, near the university there, as well as like the one tooth implants and they don't have to be using like that metal anymore in the process that they're doing, which I think bothers a lot of people like taste and things like that in their mouth. So who knew? They're disrupting the denture uh, <laughs> like industry uh, through technology. Soilmade is actually a pretty cool story. They work out of our offices at Accelerate Okanagan right now. And this gentleman, Matt Gomez, Gomez moved to the Okanagan with his family um, and like, saw that there were great orchards and was really excited about all of the amazing opportunities for local produce, but found that it was hard to build those connections with local farmers and actually figure out where to go and purchase the products that he was looking for. So he created an application, kind of like the 100 mile diet, where you can build those connections to local farmers, you can find local produce at an affordable cost, uh, figure out what it is that you need to kind of make that local meal that you're looking to develop. So it kind of just pops up on where those um, local farms or orchards are and you can go out and reach out directly. Um, what else? On the growth stage company side of things, 
Um, we have a couple who have been disrupting specific industries. And I always love talking about Piscean energetics really quickly, because did anyone know that there were shrimp in Okanagan Lake? Oh. Well, you knew way more than I did. <laughs> um, I grew up in Penticton, and then when I moved back to Kelowna, um, the gentleman who started this company came up and was explaining and talking about the shrimp in the lake, and I thought he was pulling my leg. I was so confused. Um, and then met with one of my colleagues the next day, and they were like, oh no, it's legitimate. Um, so they're a technology company taking the mysis shrimp out of Okanagan Lake and turning it into a dry pellet fish food that is retaining higher protein and it, the technology is in the process that they're taking that wet nutritious shrimp and turning it into a dry pellet fish food. They're the first of their kind to be able to do that directly uh, as well as how they're catching the shrimp without catching any other byproduct. So pretty cool process that they have going um, and so we've worked with them for the past few years as well, helping them with their technology, but also growing and scaling their business and getting into the market globally, because he goes and speaks at these like fish and aquarium conferences around the world. So again, who knew? Disrupting the fish food industry <laughs> right here in the Okanagan. Um, Two Hat Security is a cool one as well. They've been in the media quite a bit in the past year. Uh, they're creating a method to be able to monitor online chat chat platforms that children are using. So one of the gentlemen who started it, he used to work at Disney and was building the chat platform there and now has created an algorithm to be able to monitor even when people are using like sneaky zeros instead of O's or spaces between everything, uh, as well as grading and kind of giving a grade to different websites so that parents know if they're safe for their children. So a really good kind of feel good company trying to get rid of online bullying. Again, amazing things. Um, on the anchor exit side of things, so lots of people have probably heard of Club Penguin that got bought by Disney. Uh, one of the gentlemen who started Club Penguin after he left, he just loved gaming so much, he started another gaming company and there's been other gaming companies and animation company spin-offs after that as well. So it's become a big kind of subsector of tech. Um, and Hyper Hippo Studios, just within the past year, they've been working with RuneScape, Hello Kitty, uh, so Sanrio. They built a game called Adventure Capitalist that's super popular as well. So something I kind of always love to share of like showing something that happened locally but has affected uh, globally. Um, recently at McDonald's, there were like a bunch of Hello Kitty toys. I don't know if anyone saw those or anyone has kids that went wild over all of the Hello Kitty toys. Uh, those toys were designed by someone in Kelowna who's a designer at Hyper Hippo. So these toys that were given globally at McDonald's were designed locally here in the Okanagan. Super cool. So proud. <laughs> Pardon? I know, right? Okay. Whew. Moving on. Um, so this is how we're funded as an organization. We're a not-for-profit. Um, so we do get funding from the provincial and federal levels. Uh, but also we have partners and patrons that come on and support us. So like I said before, if you're looking for connections to a lawyer or someone in marketing or uh, an accountant who's an expert at shred because you think your company might be shred eligible to get money back, um, or like the college or UBC and you're hoping to partner in some capacity. Ronin HR, they're um, an HR service. Illuminate IP, they specialize in IP. Please reach out to me. I'm happy to create a warm introduction between any of these individuals. Um, and like I said, we have some expert access sessions where you can just sit down and talk to one of them for 45 minutes. So really great people to be able to connect with. And I know sometimes it's hard to just like do a cold email to reach out to someone. I would love to create that warm introduction for you. So I chatted a little bit about expert access already, uh, but we do have additional partner meetings. So if you are looking for support from one of our mentors, we would love to sit down with you a little bit first and get to know like what it is that you're looking for help with. And our mentors love helping out companies, so they're willing to like sit down for 45 minutes and kind of give you one of those expert access sessions as well and just help you kind of know where to take next steps. So. That was a lot about things going on in the tech community, and I'd be happy to answer any questions either like now or afterwards. Um, but if there aren't any right now, I'll move on to some like startup terminology and funding opportunities. Great groovy, love it. Okay, so startup terminology. Um, so we already kind of went through what a startup is, um, looking for that repeatable 
revenue source coming in. Uh, so some individuals still call like Hootsuite a startup. In this kind of terminology, they wouldn't be considered a startup anymore. Um, a startup who works with us is normally like under that $500,000 in recurring revenue per year. We probably have some closer to that end, but also some who haven't gotten revenue yet or have gotten a little bit, but needed to pivot and change like who they were marketing to or change their product a bit. Uh, MVP might be a term that you hear sometimes. That's minimum viable product. Um, it's a product with the highest return on investment versus the risk. So a lot of suggestions that companies get is create that minimum viable product first and start testing it, get users, get people coming in and checking it out, and then create those other little features that add on or make those smaller changes once you get feedback on usability or like how your users are actually um, experiencing what it is that you're creating. Uh, it would be unfortunate if you paid all of this money to create a product, whether it's hardware or software or whatever it is, and you didn't get that feedback and you realize that you took a wrong turn somewhere and people don't love the product that you made um, because it's good to get that other feedback elsewhere. Elevator pitch. So if you want to learn how to actually create one of these, um, no matter what company you're from, you always have to have a version to be able to do like a six second, like a couple minute pitch or an even longer pitch if you're looking for investment or trying to find a partner um, or like bring on a community member to support you or a co-founder. Um, or even when you're hiring someone, it's a two-way street, right? You have to be able to pitch your company to them in a way that is going to make sense for them wanting to be a part of what it is that you're doing. So um, elevator pitch is a very short synopsis of the company. Uh, it's kind of your value proposition um, and investment opportunity if you are doing this for investors as well. And I did just mention value proposition, which is the next one, uh, core value of a company or the product or service that it delivers. Um, so it's not necessarily um, easy to find as the value prop needs to be validated by the market. Positioning statement, um, an expression of how a given product or service or brand fills a particular customer need. So it's how you position yourself in the market. Business model canvas, so this is a very strategic um, process. It's a lean startup template and I'm happy to send along like this slide deck to you after the fact and maybe a snapshot of what a business model canvas is. Um, we run some sessions that just in kind of goes through breaking down a business model canvas and a lot of the time they're like breaking down an example like the iPhone and how it disrupted the market and how it got revenue and who partners were. Um, and it's always interesting to me when folks sit down and start filling out a business model canvas, uh, sometimes like the revenue section is left empty and they're like, I've never even thought of how I'm gonna get revenue from this app idea that I have or whatever it is. They're like, maybe advertising, maybe I charge a fee. Um, so it kind of breaks down a ton of different areas of your business. Uh, revenue model shows how the company will make money and eventually become profitable. Uh, sometimes it can take a while to get to that profitable time, but um, depends on investment coming in from you or other funders as well. So pivot is when a company changes what it's doing mid course. Um, so it might be changing not just like the product itself, it might be changing who you're actually marketing it to. Um, so there was an example of a company in Kelowna who was originally marketing to sales team. They were an email tracking software um, and they were like making this email tracking process so that when you're a salesperson, you send out an email, it gives you a notification when that person opened it. And then you know now like, oh, they saw my email, I can give them a call. It's like fresh in their mind. But now they've pivoted that process and they actually market to large enterprises to do internal communications. So if I were the CEO of a Fortune 500 company, let's say, and I email out to all of my staff team, I can see who opened it, when they opened it, if they forwarded it to anyone, if they clicked on links, that kind of thing. So, so they kind of pivoted who they were actually marketing to. Bootstrapping, known as self-funding. Um, this is really kind of a very lean process of growing a company. <laughs> a couple acronyms, NDA, so non-disclosure agreement. This is something that you would ask someone to sign if you're sharing an idea or if they're seeing information that 
you don't want public, uh, something they sign off on to say that they won't be sharing that information elsewhere. Um, so sometimes you might get asked to sign one of these when you go into a company, uh, but if you're sharing an idea and you think it would be valuable to have an NDA, that would be something you'd probably want to reach out to a local lawyer uh, for to be able to give you something that you can just hand out and get people to sign when needed, something that would stand up in court. SaaS is software as a service, um, so service product that's normally hosted remotely, usually over the internet or the cloud. Um, and VC is venture capital, which going into some of the funding opportunities, happy to explain a little bit more. Uh, we also call like VCs venture capitalists. Um, so they normally are investing in those small to medium or large businesses with a chunk of change, um, but also normally take equity in that company as well. So if you're looking for more terminology out there, there's a couple of resources. So when I send out the slide deck, um, like feel free to check out any of those links and kind of start to learn a little bit more. And these are just a couple good reads that we suggest to folks. So we have a bookshelf out in um, Kelowna at our office with a ton of different great business books. Uh, so The Lean Startup is a really great one that's always highly suggested. Uh, business Model Generation, so this is a book that specifically goes through the entire business model canvas process um, and kind of shows examples and gives tips and tricks and helps guide you through that process. Um, predictable Revenue has been a really popular one as well, how to create a process for generating revenue where you're able to kind of assess and predict, like make it predictive along the way. Um, so there's a couple companies that kind of swear by this process that Aaron Ross uh, walks through in his book. So a great one to kind of just check out and see if it could be a good model for your company. Startup Stash, which is on here, is also a great online resource where they're kind of posting information and documents all of the time that could be valuable. Awesome. So jumping into some funding and support stuff, whew, brief water break. So um, I'm no professional at all of these resources, but I have a general knowledge of many of them. So if you're looking for all of the details, I'm happy to create some introductions to introduce you to someone who is the pro in that field. Um, so you can ask more questions to them specifically. So how startup funding works. So this is the like idea stage. Like I have this great light bulb moment. Um, I think I'm going to keep working on this. Uh, that's my, like maybe when you might come to um, one of those startup basic sessions. And then co-founder stage, you might find someone else who's like, this is a great idea. I have the technical skills. You have the business knowledge. Let's do this together. Yay. Um, and then normally that kind of first chunk of investment coming in is from yourself or from family, friends, and sometimes we say fools. <laughs> um, and then the kind of next step once you keep growing your company is seed rounds or seed funding. Um, and that can come from angels, for instance. And there is a pretty strong angel network here in the Okanagan. Um, and there are some pitch competitions that exist. We're also starting an access to capital program for tech companies looking to hit that next kind of funding stage and looking for investment. Um, and they might come in anywhere between like $20,000 to $100,000. It kind of ranges on where your company is at. Um, but normally they come in like earlier than maybe some banks even would and earlier than a VC would. VCs, um, there's not a strong VC network in the Okanagan, but there is in Vancouver, Silicon Valley, Seattle, Boulder. Um, so they do come out to the Okanagan sometimes for things like MetaBridge that I mentioned before. Um, we do have Atrium Ventures, which is a fund, um, and that just recently started and will be investing in companies in the Okanagan as well. But that's normally kind of at this later stage. Some folks say that VCs might not get out of bed for anything less than a million dollars. So again, we've seen it range, but that kind of just tends to be more of a trend. So I mentioned NRC uh, earlier on in my presentation, the National Research Council. They'll be located out of our offices in the Okanagan Center for Innovation. Um, and they have IRAP funding. So uh, if you're a tech company, I always introduce people to Kevin Greenwood. And I always do it early on in your company's life cycle because building a relationship with the NRC is a great way to go about receiving grant funding from them. Um, because they'll let you know like, hey, come back in a couple months once you're kind of at this next stage. Um, or like now they know about your company, so when some funding comes available, they might be able to reach out and let you know that, hey, we have $20,000 for you to hire that developer. 
um, or to like make your product. So they really come in um, a lot for that project development. Um, and a lot of like the grant money normally goes to covering the salaries of employees. Cool. Um, the next one here, concierge portal. So this is a great resource to check out for like they're able to give you insight on a ton of different funding or grant opportunities that are relevant specific to your organization. So I would suggest connecting with them, giving them a like debrief of what it is that your company does, and they'll be able to give you some suggestions of grants to apply for. SIDIT, so Southern Interior Development Initiative Trust. Um, they're an organization here in the Okanagan that do loans or equity investments, but they also have a business advisory service. Um, and so SIDIT, uh, you don't have to be a tech company to join their business advisory service. Uh, so normally kind of those growth stage, later stage companies are able to get the support of mentors through the programs that they have. Um, so they also come in for like the loan component. Um, sometimes they can take equity, but you can buy them back later as well if that's something that you're interested in. Usually um, for their loans, like your post revenue and looking for working capital at that point. And they would be one of those ones that would come in earlier than a typical bank or credit union might. Shred. Uh, so this is the Scientific Research and Experimental Design Tax Incentive. Uh, this is one that I think once people find out what Shred is, they're kind of like, oh my gosh, I could have used this years ago in my company. Um, you can backdate this up to two years. So I would suggest talking with your accountant because it is um, a tax credit or an income tax credit where you actually receive a check from the government back to you. So it doesn't just take it off your taxes. You actually get a check for that amount of money. Um, you have to keep really good records of time going into research and development and design. Uh, so track hours of the employees in your company. Uh, really make sure you're diligent about this process. So if you think this might be relevant for your company, chat with your accountant or find someone who's a shred expert within uh, the accounting firm that you work with who can really break it down for you, what you need to be tracking so that you can get the most money back. Uh, for your company through this tax incentive program. This is done through the CRA, so sometimes they'll come out to the Okanagan and run workshops on what you need to be tracking and how you need to do it. But it's also great to hear from your accountant who's kind of got your best interest at heart, as well as like chat with other tech companies as well or other organizations locally and ask how they did it or the struggles that they faced. Because it is a process, but it can be worth it to get the amount of money back that you're able to get from this. Yeah. And this is um, not just tech. Not just tech related, but it has to be research and development and design related for your company. Um, and you can see on here, like it can cover up to 40% of uh, qualified shred capital expenditures. Um, so it's a pretty great program. Uh, EBC, so this is another tax credit program. So as long as you're um, registered as an eligible business corporation in BC, um, you're able to have accredited investors invest in your company at a minimum of $25,000 and they get a 30% tax credit back. So uh, to become an accredited tax or an accredited investor, uh, you can't just like, hey mom, you should become a, an accredited investor and invest in my company. Um, there, they do have to have a certain amount of working capital and things like that. So there is a process, uh, but this really de-risks it for investors and incentivizes it for them to be giving twenty-five thousand dollars and get thirty percent back. That's a pretty good deal for them. It is a pretty small application as well, so not too long of a process for you to register. Community Futures. Uh, so we have a couple of people from here in the room. So they're the experts that you can go and chat with about Community Future loans and mentorship programs. But I think it's up to about $150,000 for earlier stage startups um, looking for loans through Community Futures. And they also have great mentorship programs, again, that aren't just related to technology companies. So they're a great resource to reach out to. And they do wonderful workshops and things like that, too, and really support local communities. Um, and every Community Futures programs look a little bit different across the Okanagan, so like Salmon Arm, Vernon, Kelowna, and Penticton. Um, so there's resources kind of across the board in the Okanagan that you can reach out to. 
Futurepreneur, so they have a startup program and mentorship as well. So again, relevant to any sector, looking for mentorship and support. Um, they have someone who normally comes out and runs a series of workshops as well. Uh, they don't have a specific person located here in the Okanagan, uh, but their startup program um, you can apply for as long as you're between the ages of 18 and 29. Um, it's normally about prime plus three for their loans um, and for a program registration fee and there is like a monthly charge afterwards. So some of these programs and loan processes all look a little bit different. So it's good to kind of like, if you know you're looking for a loan for some working capital, chat with a couple different organizations and like see what might be a good fit and kind of make sure you're getting all of that content and information. Um, their term is over about five years, interest only payments for the first year, uh, no collateral needed in their case. Women's Enterprise Center, so we're really lucky to have Women's Enterprise Center for the province located in Kelowna. So they run a lot of great events. Uh, they have every two weeks kind of a meet up, sit down, get to know you type program and event. Um, and they do require if you're looking for loans and mentorship that you go to one of those sessions first. So if you think you might be interested in, go and check out one of their like meetups um, and get to know someone who works there a little bit. They're located in Landmark One um, and happy to do an introduction to someone at that organization as well if you'd like. Um, they have loans available up to about $150,000 and it needs to be a woman that owns 51% of the company at least. So that's kind of a parameter. Interest rates are normally prime plus two to prime plus four as well. And you do just need to be a Canadian citizen or permanent resident. So BDC, um, they provide some startup financing, uh, typically looking for 12 months of sales or so that you've had within your company before you can apply for one of their loans. But sometimes they'll come in um, even earlier if they're partnering with an organization like Futurepreneur. Maybe they each come in for $15,000 to make it $30,000 and it kind of de-risks it for both of them. But they also might both have different repayment uh, processes or options for them. So they do have later stage uh, funding as well for loans, anywhere between the 500,000 mark up to 20 million. So for some of those larger companies looking for a solid chunk. <coughs> so Global Affairs Canada, they have a CAN export program and this is a non-repayable matching funds grant. Um, and this is really intended to help your company get into other markets elsewhere outside of like the Okanagan or outside of Canada. Um, so they provide a matching grant um, of about like $10,000 I think is the, the smallest amount that you can get all the way up to $99,999. Um, and some of the eligible activities for using this matching grant money um, is like business travel, participation in trade fairs, um, market research, adapting of marketing tools that you already have into other markets. Uh, so if you just need to tweak them a little bit and get those printed out uh, and any legal fees associated with getting into new markets as well. So some really good things that it can kind of cover for you if you are looking to expand. Um, some things that don't count under this matching grant is like ongoing operational expenses, um, activities where you've already been in that market for 24 months or so. So it's showing like you've already put in that time and effort. Um, yeah, that's that one. Uh, Building Canada Innovation Program. So this is a first customer program with the government. There are a couple priority areas that they have, but that kind of continues to keep expanding. So like recently there were companies talking about drones and VR and AR also being highly utilized in government. Uh, but things that relate to health, safety, security, enabling technologies for protecting the soldier, environment. Um, and this was created to kind of help kickstart businesses um, in like across Canada, really, um, to be able to get that first customer being their government. So if you're applying for this, you need to apply with the government before you've actually sold elsewhere to anyone. Uh, but once you send in that application, then you can start marketing and selling locally as well if you'd like. So MyTax, um, I mentioned this earlier. So Jennifer Tedman Jones from MyTax works up at UBC Okanagan and has an amazing relationship with faculty and students. Um, and then they work directly with us at Accelerate Okanagan as well as one of their community partners 
to find companies within the Okanagan who are looking to um, have students work on research projects for them. So this is a four month research internship with a grad student or PhD student where you're doing a matching grant of $7,500 and my tax puts in $7,500 and the student spends half of their time with you and your company and half of their time with the professor who's overseeing the research. So you're kind of also getting that time of the professor which is really awesome. Um, so they're working on this research project for you. Um, and all of these projects are normally shred eligible because again, it's that research and development and design component. So you're still getting money back from the money that you're putting into this program where half of it's being covered. So some really great ways that some of these things work together as well. So if this might be something you're interested in, feel free to reach out and I can do a connection to Jennifer Tedman Jones at the university. NSERC Engage Grants, so this one's been highly successful for a lot of um, tech companies specifically, uh, but it's the Natural Science and Engineering Research um, Council. So they have these Engage Grants where it can cover things like materials, lab time, the research student time to be working with you, um, but you need to be like you get to be partnered with a prof and a group of undergraduate students working again on research and development for you, which is pretty cool. There's a couple different application periods, so I would suggest just checking out online if you um, think it might be a fit. Uh, but it supports that short term R&D and the projects to solve specific problems that the company is facing. So we had one company that we worked with that um, got a couple different versions of the NSERC grants and were able to actually go into the Star Lab at UBCO, utilize the 3D printers or CNC machines, purchase the actual materials needed to develop their prototype and be able to build it with a group of research students at UBCO. So pretty cool. This one is quite similar to NSERC, but more on the social sciences and humanities research side of things. So similar, but like the research and development project would have to look a little bit different. Uh, so you'd be working with someone more on the social sciences side of professor and a uh, group of undergrad students. But this could be something like um, maybe figuring out habit formation uh, in a certain area so that you can continue to develop your products around habit formation. So get youth working. Um, this is eligible for hiring someone between the ages of 15 to 29. Um, they have to be unemployed or underemployed, so working less than 20 hours a week at that time. Uh, they can't be a full-time student at that point. Uh, could be enrolled in high school or planning on returning at a later date. Uh, this is a grant for like employing them up to a minimum of three months at at least 30 hours a week. So a great opportunity to get $2,800 up to three employees and you can request up to $1,000 for some training components as well. So again, a way to kind of incentivize or de-risk hiring and bringing on someone else to help, especially kind of like a youth or a recent grad. Canada BC Job Grant. So this is another training grant that's out there and this can be a request up to $10,000. Um, so really great opportunity to cover like textbooks, student fees, tuition. Um, so it is a cost sharing one though as well where you have to be matching uh, that grant funding. So if you find an opportunity like ongoing training with Lighthouse Labs for instance because you want your um, developer to learn some of these other skill sets of different languages um, and let's say it's an $8,000 um, training course you'd request them to cover at least half of that and you would have to cover the other half as well. But if you're going to ask them to do it anyways, you get half of it covered, which is great. Career Focus and Career Connect. So um, connecting with Bowman Employment, they're also over in Landmark 1 in Kelowna, is a great way to kind of start the conversation around if there's funding and hiring incentive programs that they still have money or dollars for. Um, they cover 50% again, like matching funds for career focus for folks within the ages of or 15 to 30 years of age. Um, you do have to be in good standing with WorkSafe BC. So we've had some companies be like, I didn't even know I needed to register with WorkSafe BC. So that's also something to look into. You have to have a vacant full-time position and have been in business for at least a year to request this. So there are a couple parameters but they cover about 50% at $7,500 is the grant that you can request.